Okay, yes, we can see. Okay, yeah. perfect. All right, so hi everyone. My name is Stephanie Grable. I'm so excited to share with you about how I got here and how this research is going to make an impact. Uh, this experience with Notre Dame has been such a blessing. And so let's quick run back to the beginning of my research. I found an opportunity to join St. Mary's County Public Schools in 2020 as they were gearing up to launch a new early childhood initiative. Uh, the students in grades K through five in St. Mary's County Public Schools were participating in a reading screening using Dibbles, which is soon to be known as Acadians. Uh, the screening helps to determine the fluency of students' reading skills and predict risk for future reading difficulties. So screening and diagnostic data would be reviewed and grade level teams would help with instructional plans. As part of this plan, the system-wide approach evolved where literacy intervention teachers, such as myself, and assistants would be assigned to the neediest of the schools in the county to provide more opportunities for intervention services. These part-time teachers provided three hours of intervention services for a school each of the days of the week. Part-time teachers would provide services and students would be assigned to intervention services following the universal screening process and grade level team meetings. Currently, intervention support is provided to 11 of our county's 19 elementary schools. This is my third year working with SMCPS as a literacy intervention teacher. And I was inspired to focus on the development of phonemic awareness skills for my dissertation because I knew there was meaningful data. An analysis of the timeline of these interventions has led to some direct policy guidelines to meet the needs of the county's at-risk learners. So current data from the National Assessment for Educational Progress shows that an astounding 50% of students in the United States are falling below a basic level of proficiency in reading. And I think it's important to know that reading is not an innate ability. And so rather unlike walking or talking, which we can pick up by experiences in our environment, reading requires explicit and systematic instruction that builds on the smallest units of speech called phonemes. And in English, there are 44 phonemes, and these units of speech are at the beginning stage of reading progression, aimed at an ultimate goal where the students will tip from learning to read to reading to learn. And so as of right now, the percentage of fourth grade students in the U.S. performing below the NAEP basic level ranges from 20 to 52 percent, and the percentage was 39 if averaged throughout the United States. So the significance at that third grade point is paramount. The Education Commission of the states released guidance for school system that identifies that the shift is happening most commonly after third grade and the students who are unable to acquire the skills by grade three satisfactorily are more likely to drop out before graduating high school. So some states have adopted policies uh, for third grade retention based off of these reading proficiency assessments. And alarmingly, 17 states require this retention in third grade based on their testing. So this study pushes to fill the gap in understanding just how these critical components of student learner profiles like grade level, demographic variables, and beginning of year screening scores can impact the attendance that's necessary to reach proficiency in phonemic awareness skills during kindergarten and first grade. So it was clear that the data on phonemic awareness intervention was necessary to better understand critical aspects of services. These research questions I formed to look at variables of learner profiles to determine their significance in the attendance of intervention required to reach proficient phonemic awareness. So the first question looks at uh, the understanding of grade level impacts between kindergartners and first graders. The second question looks at a lot of different variables, socioeconomic status, English learner status, ethnicity, and students with disabilities. And then the third question looks to see if composite reading scores at the beginning of the year have an impact on the duration of intervention required. So why phonemic awareness? The National Reading Panel has credited five essential components of reading. Phonemic awareness is one of them. There's also phonics, vocabulary, fluency, and comprehension. Additionally, letter recognition and phoneme segmentation continue to be named as the two most critical components of literacy for early reading progression. 
So the theoretical framework that I chose to use as the backbone of this study was a developmental phase theory by Lene Erie. Her theory demonstrates how these essential components of reading are a fluid progression of stages that shape the reader's development, and the developmental stage theory divides development into these distinct stages based off of qualitative differences in behavior. So the five stages for her started with the prealphabetic stage. And here, this is when children don't yet understand letter sound relationships or even know all the letters of the alphabet. And then the partial alphabetic phase, children know most of the letter names, but they're beginning to learn the relationship between those letters and sounds. The full alphabetic phase, this is when students know the relationship between letters and sounds. The consolidated alphabetic phase, rather than sounding out each letter in a word individually, the students start to recognize patterns. And then the automatic phase, children become fluent readers and don't need to decode familiar words anymore. And so phonemic awareness for my study falls right at that, um, in between the first and second phases here, that pre-alphabetic and partial alphabetic phases. So literacy interventions overall are pretty heavily researched. Uh, while it seems like that would be a positive contribution to the field, it can sometimes be overwhelming to teachers who are scouring for answers to decades old questions about the best avenues for teaching students to read. The field becomes oversaturated with research that combines multiple targets for instruction, such as combining phonics and phonemic awareness in one intervention, and then looking for significant results. Uh, targets needing to be explored individually was a problem that I found, and um, some explicit instruction on reading development. So it's been established that phonemic awareness and letter recognition are two predictive variables for future reading success. So I chose to stick with phonemic awareness um, and small intervention group schedules that would be impacted by variables of learner profiles. So where there's a lot of information on literacy interventions in the research, I was guided by both Dr. Bouchat and Dr. Blaney and how to highlight just a few studies here um, that will help to launch us into where I started. So the first study that I'd like to mention uh, identifies the need for highlighting phonemic awareness instruction. And so that was from Lonigan and Shanahan, uh, and they introduced information from the National Early Literacy Panel, where information was pulled from a study conducted by West and his colleagues in 2000. They collected data from a nationally representative sample of over 19,000 students that were enrolled in kindergarten in the 98 to 99 school year. And the researchers collected the data on their participants' general knowledge on literacy and on quantitative skills. So for the components of basic literacy, they chose to look at beginning and ending sounds, rhyming words, word recognition. And in this sample, 29% of participants had mastered phonemic awareness skills at that kindergarten level. And that included beginning and ending sounds. And then they looked at the longitudinal data which showed that these students were significantly more successful in later reading outcomes compared to their grade level peers. Now, a second study looked at the need for small group intervention for those who were lacking the skill of phonemic awareness. And so I was looking at Kavanaugh's research with his colleagues in 2004, where they collected data from five individual, 16 small group, and then six whole class interventions and they synthesized it to find that of all of these, the largest effect sizes were found with small group format. So I knew I needed phonemic awareness. I knew I needed small group intervention. Then another study that I was um, anchoring with was Blessie's and her colleagues in 2018. They ran interventions with thousands of kindergarten students and found that they required the use of systematic explicit intervention uh, for predictive reading gains. And so, this research was conducted in Denmark, and they used like a business as usual control group where intervention targets would simply be woven into the core literacy program. And so now I knew I needed phonemic awareness, I needed small groups, I needed explicit instruction. And then the last study that really helped guide me in my methods um, is identifying the duration as an essential component to this intervention. And so this was from Rice and her colleagues, uh, she did a meta-analysis in 2022 of interventions with preschool through first grade students to show that the window for proficiency following literacy intervention 
with a target of phonemic awareness can be between eight and 14 weeks. And so uh, there's just a better understanding still needed uh, for these outcomes by pulling these age groups apart and not just lumping preschool, kindergarten, and first grade all together. So my research analyzes the grade level component and duration to better understand how phonemic awareness intervention during kindergarten and then first grade can vary in attendance needs to reach the necessary level of proficiency. So the methods for designing my research, uh, supported by Dr. Fenster, uh, included identifying a representative sample population, analyzing the data collection, and examining issues of reliability and validity. The analysis looked at the potential difference in the duration of phonemic awareness intervention when acted upon by independent variables. So the research used the phonological awareness blueprint program as the intervention chosen. It was developed by the 95% group and it provides tens of thousands of teachers in the United States access to explicit, systematic, sequential lessons that support students who are at risk for reading difficulties. Uh, the intervention has key features to uphold fidelity, uh, which were identified as necessary by Blessies and her colleagues in 2018 to include a screening tool, scripted lessons, and progress monitoring tools. So the material can be used as an additional component to any core language literacy curriculum. I used a linear regression model so that I could um, conduct this study using a non-experimental quantitative research design and using existing early childhood data from St. Mary's County Public Elementary Schools. I used this archival data from the 21 to 22 school year and other researchers have used archival data in order to draw some of their conclusions on the effectiveness of components with phonemic awareness interventions uh, to start the national reading panel, as well as both Lene Erie, uh, use this archival data to draw some of their conclusions on the effective components of PA interventions. Additionally, Kavanaugh and his colleagues looked at 20 years of kindergarten awareness interventions and found certain features produce the largest effects such as phonemic awareness, small group size, and intensity of 15 to 30 minutes a session. So my research used all of those features. And while I was involved in collecting data for the set in order to avoid potential bias, um, I was part of a team of 11 interventionists. And uh, the study uses duration as the dependent variable, identified as the number of sessions in weeks. And then students continue with the intervention until proficiency is reached in phonemic awareness. Uh, we find that through progress monitoring data collected every three weeks to monitor growth. Five independent variables categorize learner profile information for participants, being their socioeconomic status, ELL status, ethnicity, students with disability status, and then their grade level. And significant differences were found using a regression analysis. The eligibility criteria for students to receive the PA intervention was a two-step process. Um, the, this piece was important because the intervention needed to be showing that students were gaining a new skill rather than just meeting proficiency for a skill that they already had mastered. And so students struggling in reading are not all equally in need of phonemic awareness support. Uh, rather, they might need support in another one of the National Reading Panel's five essential components. And so we wanted to identify who really needed PA instruction. So the first step was identifying students with scores below the composite grade level benchmark using those Dibble screeners, uh, meaning that they're at risk for reading difficulty. The second step was to look at the data from the group of students and identify whose scores for phonemic segmentation fluency specifically fell below grade level benchmark. And that meant that scores would be zero for our kindergarten participants, and it would be below 19 for our first grade participants. So students who qualified for intervention would be placed into small group instruction with a maximum of four participants during the intervention sessions. Uh, these literacy intervention teachers were centrally trained in the county and they were assigned to schools for support. The intervention program was available to schools from October through June of the 21 to 22 school year. To reach proficiency in the phonemic awareness intervention, students had to have mastered three skills. And so it was the isolation of phonemes, blending of phonemes, and then segmenting phonemes. 
Uh, the first skill included initial, final, and medial, finding those phonemes. Uh, blending required them to be able to take two phonemes and put them together or three phonemes and put them together. And segmenting, we worked with two, three, and four phonemes. Uh, these skills are successfully mastered through data collection driven by our three-week cycles. And a student who scored a minimum of 80% correct on all the skills was noted as proficient and would exit the intervention. And we would make note of that in our data. Uh, my data set had 354 participants. And so that consisted of 182 first graders and 172 kindergartners. Other studies used a similar number of participants and found significant results. Uh, like Burns and their colleagues, found a high correlation of phoneme isolation, blending, and segmenting with letter sound knowledge in 192 kindergartners. So the regression analysis that I conducted looked at one Y variable, which was the number of weeks, to determine if any of my independent variables had significant effect on how long the students would remain in the intervention before reaching that level of proficiency. And now we get to the good stuff. So we've got some results. Um, so the first research question, we were looking at grade level. And so when we were looking at the grade level variable, we found that kindergarten participants attending intervention for an average of 12 weeks and first grade participants were attending intervention for an average of 14 weeks. And so that's a two week difference between those groups of participants. And that was statistically significant. So the data identified that this difference between the two grade levels, um, and so uh, in a few, if I were to redo this study, I would love to add preschool because a lot of the research that I was reading had that preschool year. Um, but this is a great start with kindergarten and first grade being represented to show how many weeks it was taking to um, exit out of phonemic awareness instruction. The second research question was looking at other variables. And so uh, we found that one that did find significant results was that students registered with a, with a disability were attending phonemic awareness intervention for four more weeks when compared to the average attendance. And so in my sample, students with speech IEPs were a high percentage of the students identified with disabilities in this population. <laughs> Students with severe learning disabilities didn't participate in the intervention because they were already being served by assigned special education teachers in accordance with their specialized learning plans. And so speech development has been researched in its connection with phonemic awareness to explore its significant relationships, uh, such as Man and Foy in 2003. They looked at preschoolers emerging speech skills and how it impacted perception of speech, rhyme awareness, and phoneme manipulation. And so from there, we looked at one other research question. Um, so the third research question looked to see if that composite, that overall reading score at the beginning of kindergarten or beginning of first grade impacted how long they would remain in intervention. And so uh, this was supported by research um, using the Dibbles method and of assessing the students. Um, identifying students who are at risk for reading failure and their continued progress monitoring. Uh, there are four subtests for kindergarten students. So that would include letter naming, phonemic segmentation, nonsense words, and then word reading. And then the first grade screener has all four of those tests and then one additional test, which is the oral reading fluency. And so a composite score combines all of those subtests that are just one minute long and takes a look at how that student is projecting based off of grade level benchmarks. And so what we found in the analysis, it showed that beginning of year composite scores did have a significant effect on the duration of attendance. So students who were starting at a higher level needed to attend the intervention for less weeks than students who are starting at a lower level. All right. So researchers, including Lene Erie and Burns and his colleagues, have shown the impact of phonemic awareness on other reading areas. Uh, it's a critical stage for early childhood classrooms to explore the most appropriate use of their resources when supporting at-risk students. Future research proposals have two directed avenues um, 
to pursue following my findings. And so the first one uh, would be to take the duration of intervention and determine if it has longitudinal connection to students who require additional phonemic awareness intervention the following school year. And so as students are in kindergarten who attend the PA intervention, are they additionally screened and needing PA intervention in grade one? Um, so for example, a student who's in kindergarten and attended PA intervention for 16 weeks, we wanna know is that statistically more likely to qualify them for PA intervention in first grade if we compare that with someone who only needed intervention for say 10 weeks? Um, this would hypothesize that students who take more time to reach proficiency would require supplemental teaching to make continued progress towards those grade level benchmarks. And so with my current data set, I would require the acquisition of intervention data from the following school year, from 2022 to 2023, for the first grade students, which were my kindergartners. There were 173 of them. And longitudinal data could be analyzed just as Al Obieda and Fuchs did. And they found student characteristics such as naming speed and segmentation could predict whether or not students would be responsive or non-responsive to interventions. Um, a second avenue that we could take with this research would be looking at data from preschool students, uh, as I mentioned with my first research question. So if we added preschoolers to tracking the amount of time that they were needing in these interventions to determine if phonological awareness intervention supports would be statistically different in duration uh, for those preschoolers from kindergarten or first grade. And so most recently, uh, Schluter and Rice both included preschool participants in their research of phonemic awareness intervention services. And they concluded that phonemic awareness gains could be made effectively within the construct of small group intervention with four and five-year-old students. So when considering cost comparisons for public school planning and allocation of resources, which is what a lot of us are doing right now as we uh, wind into the election cycle, uh, we're trying to figure out how we're spending these funds. And so it would be ideal to understand how providing support to students at different grade level and would impact the timeline to reach proficiency so that we know which students we should be supporting first. Uh, and that timeline is going to also require information about the maintenance that will be needed for those students in subsequent years. Research has looked at longitudinal effects of literacy intervention but more often, again, with those combined targets. So rather than just phonemic awareness, they might use interventions that also introduce phonics for students. Um, and so uh, one example is uh, Hatcher in 1994 found that when students were presented with intervention divided out into uh, just phonemic awareness or just phonics or a combined intervention or um, just the core reading was their control group. Uh, they found that phonemic awareness intervention, when you isolate it, gave the most significant impact of those findings. And so the impact of these results should be used to further the understanding of phonemic awareness interventions in early childhood settings so that literacy specialists can support everyone in the schools uh, because this impacts teachers and parents and faculty and the volunteers and staff and then ultimately the students when planning the allocation of these resources for schools and the initiatives that'll meet these at-risk learners.